Ah! Shit. The music in the, the game is fucking loud as shit, too. Yes, it is. Um, I've got more than my daily allowance of music listening in today. <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> no, no, it's good. Like I said, I've, I've probably had about eight hours of music listening today. Really? What, what brought that on? Yeah. Just doing work and stuff? Well, no, just because I'm working, you know, working from home. Right. Uh, a lot of what I'm doing is, you know, not it's not fully coding, but it's work that I'm sitting there doing by myself. So it's good to have some tunes on. So I uh, find it very helpful motivationally to have tunes. Absolutely, man. When when uh when I was cleaning the backyard this morning, uh, I got my little Sony radio. I don't know if I've ever sent you a photo of it. I fucking love that thing. It's one of my favorite possessions. Yeah, it's an old school so. 80s looking Sony little transistor radio. Right. And it has nice. it uses two D batteries that I don't think I've ever changed in like 4 years. <laughs> like that just wow. Yeah, it's yeah. crazy. It's crazy. And uh uh when I was outside cleaning, I just I had that thing up on the on the top of the uh Well, what is that? Is that you or is that me? That's you, mate. That is that Monty? Sound. Hold on a second. Dude, what is he whining well, could, about? That could be your Monty or it could be mine. Like, it was my Monty. Yeah, he's he was yeah, gnawing on a chicken serious. bone out there. Now he's probably... I, to, I told my dad, don't give him chicken bones, you know? But yeah, he doesn't... Give yeah, bones. telling my dad not to do something is like telling a brick wall. You know what I mean? Oh, it's like, fuck me. At what point did we become the parents of our parents? when we tell them to do shit and they don't fucking <laughs> when did that happen right because that happens well we're about the same age Ray's. so probably yeah. i want to say like a couple years ago maybe like two years ago yeah for me. well i think maybe a bit longer for me but yeah it's not you know but it happens though, right it, it just happens over it's sort of overnight you're just like and they ask you shit and you tell them shit and they don't listen to you anyway <laughs> Like, what should I do about this? And then you tell them, yeah, well, this, 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 and this. And then they just go off and do whatever they want to do anyway. Yeah, I did something different. Oh, just like, oh, well, fuck them. Well worth it. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. But uh, before Monty chimed in there, um, I was cleaning the backyard. And I was like sort of like hosing it down and scrubbing it with a like a push broom. And uh, the music was blaring. And, and uh, Island in the Sun came on which is a, one of my favorite tracks by Weezer. Uh, I know everyone loves oh, the Blue okay. Album. Everyone loves the Blue Album, and I do too. I like the Blue Album. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. I love the Blue Album. I would say mm -hmm. it's it's probably one of their better albums, right? Or their, their best album, yeah. even. Yeah. But uh, for some reason, and I, I know what it is, it's that time in my life when that album, the Green Album, came out. I oh, just yeah, got, for sure. I just got my car, broken up with my girlfriend at the time. I was feeling really you know, bulletproof, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, and it was just that time in my life, man. Just when that song, you know, hash pipe well, and Island in the sun, when those songs thing, came out. You know, music is the closest thing we have to time travel. It Only is back in the past. It is. You're right. You put on a tune from 10, 20 years ago, whatever. And you just like instant zip on travel. Yeah. It's you're great. absolutely right. You're absolutely right crazy good for that but yeah I know what you mean about Weezer Weezer are a funny band in that I first encountered them I think it was the 90s and they did uh, Just Like Buddy Holly I don't mm -hmm. know what's the name of the track but yeah. that was the first song that was you know in the in the pop charts same i remember so being thoroughly first... unimpressed by them like yeah uh, yeah i just like thought, what's oh, the big deal <laughs> yeah it's, like, oh, it's got that sort of cliche cheese to it and i don't like that i'm sort of predisposed to disliking yep. that kind of stuff exactly and, and then dude. later on later on i sort of discovered them properly and listened to their albums properly and I was just like wow they're really good and that Buddy Holly song is like the worst song they did <laughs> yes, it is. it's because it was a gimmick wasn't it I mean it had that yeah, gimmicky gimmick video with happy days 
And I remember at the time, everyone was making such a big deal out of them. And I remember just feeling very, yeah. like, underwhelmed. Like, oh, come on. Yeah. Like, nah. Like, what? Yeah. Like, these guys are like, great. Thing, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's exactly what I thought. And then yeah, in, I've, got, I've got a couple of their albums and, uh, since and, I've listened to them probably. They're pretty good. And then I heard the sweater song and I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm but that was years later so years nice. later I, I didn't even hear i didn't even listen to the blue album until probably 96 97 maybe even later yeah, me too. Maybe like 99 maybe, maybe, yeah yeah quite possibly they're there they remind me you know how there's like lots of bands that sort of merge into one band yeah in your head you're not do you know what i mean mm-hmm. and yeah absolutely they, um are the same they're the ones that merge into um the eels for me the eels it's the eels novocaine for my soul or novocaine i think the song is oh called. yeah 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 and even though they don't remotely sound alike not really in my head i just sort of picture the same people <laughs> yeah the same band it's, it's sort of weird that's me with like the hives vines and strokes yes <laughs> oh yeah absolutely <laughs> It's just like the one, the vine, one face. They might as well just be one band. Yeah, they the should just become one band at this point. You mentioned that the other day, right? The Strokes, didn't you? Yeah, I was just one because I was. We were talking about that sort of nineteen ninety nine, two thousand. Uh, yeah, it was like a that. I guess it was like a post punk revival, pre yeah. new wave revival. I think. I think that album... Interpol and all that. Interpol, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who else? Um, yeah, Interpol. That, um, that album, The Strokes, is it called Is This the, Is This Is it? This it? Is This It? It's a that song, too. Probably, it's a title, title track. Possibly the best album of that the lot. came out since the 90s. I agree. Right. It's It, it felt there like a 90s album. A that's actually better. Yeah, yeah, true, true. Um, and they, at the time, I didn't really appreciate it, to be honest. And it weren't until another one, it weren't until I sort of listened to them later on because I saw on one or two, like, top albums of all, when, when you get really bored and you run out of stuff to listen to and no one's recommending it. I was already starting to look right now at, like, the top albums yeah. of 2000. Because I was just top albums of all time and all this sort of stuff. And The Strokes was literally rated as the top album. And I was what? like, what? No, that's come that's on. Weird. Come on, yeah, like yeah, nothing no, in the two thousands is even in the top twenty five for me or top thirty. No, 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 exactly, exactly, exactly. <laughs> But then I listened to it and I was like, mm, yeah, it's pretty. That's a pretty damn good album. Yeah, awesome. No, it's a re- it's a phenomenal album, but but the top album of all time, it's not. Yeah, yeah, I can't remember what album, that, what magazine that, had rated that as Rolling Stone, album. probably or something like that. It or? probably was. It probably was Rolling Stone, actually. I'm not sure if it was all time either. It might have been a, of a certain era, like 25 years or something. They're like, like best all time album cool. ever, Eminem. <laughs> just like, <laughs> or like best rap album ever, like at the yeah. time, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, come yeah, on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't so, know. Maybe that's part of like making. That is good, mate. And I need to listen to that again because I haven't listened to it for a while. I think a lot of albums are like good movies that. Um, you have the good to give ones mm. that you want to keep listening to. You have to give them a gap. Yes. Right. Yes. Some you can just carry on listening to. Very few. You can, even the best of the best, you will get bored of eventually if you do. I rinse, rinse. I definitely did that during like. Do you remember when M- MP3s became readily accessible? Yes. And and we're talking the same time period here, ninety seven, ninety six, when we all first yeah. started getting like internet. And yeah. uh, Napster. Did you use Napster? Was Napster big over there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah. We had Napster, and then I can't remember what became, what came after Napster because Napster LimeWire. was big. LimeWire was one, and then there was Frost another Wire. one. Um, I can't remember the other one. Um, and it's like, hey, you could get movies here. What? <laughs> and then sort yeah, of, it, yeah, it just yeah. became, yeah, it was just. It's like, oh, but, cool. you know, Napster ultimately was massive. Um, and it did everyone a massive favor because even though, like, uh, what was it, Metallica were like the public face of anti Napster, weren't they? 
that really <laughs> hurt that. I think that kind of hurt their image. I think it did. It I made them look I'm really greedy like, and like yeah, corporate. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and in um, the end, um, you have the reason things like Spotify, iTunes exist is because of that. Absolutely, absolutely. Because they, they couldn't absolutely. stop it, so they, they they just made it easy. No, they couldn't stop it. It's like let's just yeah. make it really easy for people to enjoy this music while still paying for it. And it works. Oh it fuck works, yeah! Right? I, I haven't downloaded music or movies in ages. Exactly. Yeah, because it's a faff compared to just clicking on something and go and play. Do you know what I mean? So right. They, have... they 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 sort of they preyed on our on our laziness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is smart. They appealed to our 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 love of of the path of least resistance or convenience enthusiasm, if you will. Which is also why Amazon is taking over the world. Right. right. <laughs> yeah, they they know nice. they knew they figured out like okay, let's stop restricting them. Let's just give them what they want, but make them pay a subscription for it. Yeah. That's really the yeah, only yeah, way yeah, to yeah, do yeah, it. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, it's funny. I was having a conversation about Napster with with some of my friends this morning. Uh, because they were talking about how Napster's stocks are really high, and you know they're they're bigger than Disney right now. Their stocks are are worth so much. Napster. And... Is it still even a, is it a, com- is no, it a Nap- company? No, did I say Nap- Napster? I meant Netflix. Netflix, Netflix, Netflix yeah. is what I meant. Well, I might have. All those streaming services are going to be well up at the moment, aren't they? Yeah, but what what I was sort of realizing was that like, I don't know how it was in England, but in the United States, there was a time when there were four channels basically, and you had. CBS, oh, yeah, ABC, NBC, yeah. Yeah. and if some, like, dude, like when the Beatles came over, I mean, dude, every single human being, like, in the United States saw that mm-hmm. episode of Ed Sullivan or whatever, when, yep. when, when you know, here here are the Beatles, and they played, you know, She Loves yeah. You, and I Want to Hold yeah. Your Hand, and, and that was just, everyone saw it, and then Cable came around in the 80s, yeah. 70s yeah. and 80s, and it, it diluted that impact of of the networks yeah. where you didn't it's the same have as the music mm-hmm. yeah same thing right it's same thing same thing you just described there about like i i saw that in some ways i sort of preferred it when music was sort of funneled to so, us in a very yes. narrow way so you would watch like one or two shows a week and listen to a radio Top of pops, and you get like the weekly top of the pops and all that stuff, yeah. and that's how you discover new music. And it was just all sort of quite neatly and narrowly funneled to you. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we had MTV. Now, so, yeah, and then you then MTV came in, uh, and then and now it, none of that stuff exists, right? MTV does not show music anymore. No, and uh, top of the pops is not even a program on TV anymore. Oh, it isn't. Um, not on our not. In, not in the UK now, and um, um, so now it's, it's just like, where do you where do you even know what new music to listen to? Do you know what I mean? But well, pop pop music is sort of fun. Pop music is to, to oh my god, it's disgustingly shit anyway. It's it, is, it, makes, it is it is. I I did listen to it a lot when oh. I was driving. Um, and there were some artists that I did oh. sort of enjoy, like The Weeknd. I, I thought his music was pretty good. Um, uh, but... Yeah, I don't know much about him, but yeah, he kind of seems cool. He does. You know he's I mean? good. Yeah, he's good. His music's pretty good. He's but I mean, cool. it's your one yeah. out of like 100 <laughs> or one out of 50 oh, yeah. is going to be cool. like a proper artist. And then the rest are all just sort of hand selected you know, because they're attractive as hell or whatever. and Well, yeah, I mean, nothing's ever really changed there, has it? Um, no. Since I remember anyway. But, um, but, but I yeah, guess I the point... I liken I, it to... But yeah, go on. Go on. The, the point I was making with Netflix was that Netflix brought that back momentarily. They brought back that shared experience of everybody yeah. watching. I mean, when Stranger Things Season 3 came out... Things everybody watched it this recent tiger yeah. king documentary or whatever yes, everybody was watching one. it yes. like it was a shared experience and it brought us all back to that sort of network television mentality of everybody yeah. you know that like the Definitely. beatles on ed sullivan or like the moon landing or like you were yeah, yeah, everybody's yeah, watching there it. was a period there was a period i remember what you're saying there about that and i remember when you know i don't know Dom, i haven't seen it I remember when we were, you know, kids in that, and you, like, everyone would watch the same show in the evening, and then the next day you would talk about it, right, mm-hmm. at school or whatever. Yep. Everyone watched it, right? That was Whereas, the Simpsons. Like, I sort of know it recently. <laughs> yeah, the Simpsons or whatever. 
Um, I sort of noticed recently in the last few years, is you sort of see people and you go, oh, yeah, I've been watching this. And they go, yeah, I ain't seen that yet. I'm watching this instead. Yeah. <laughs> because I was watching something completely different. Yeah, well, there's there, there, there there's an cool. oversaturation. But, there is. But yeah. Netflix, in the U.S. anyway, I know it's not the same in, in, in England, but for us, Netflix became the channel. The channel that yeah. everybody yeah. was watching. I think it sort of is to a certain extent here. Yeah, for sure. And uh, but and, and uh, is, yeah, it's, it's, there's just so much. Yeah, there is. And and going back to music, obviously, <laughs> we strayed away from that. Was the 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 nine the late nineties two thousands? Um, I was I was literally looking up a list, but I I got to kill this treasure goblin. Um, yeah, we'll do that in a sec. I think the Strokes probably were. I think you're right about that album. From I think 2000, that was... yeah, absolutely. But um, I need like a top ten that, list. Every, everything that comes before that is better. Do you know by default? Do you know what I mean? Just because it is. Yeah, the '90s were, you know, were 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 freaking amazing. Anything that I personally discovered since the '90s, 2000 and beyond that I've particularly taken a particular interest or liking to is not even the same genre of music anymore. So you can't even compare them anyway. What do you mean? The same like, genre? If I, if I, if I listen to, to anything that's come out since then, it's always some kind of different genre of music. Like, I like a lot of electric. electric oh, right, right, right. So it's not stuff. even rock anymore. No, exactly. Yeah, it's not even rock anymore. I don't think that. I mean, there there are odd bits and pieces, and and I have discovered some good stuff lately. That thanks to Spotify, which um, is awesome, um, for that reason that it's all there and it's what quite clever. How I told you before, how it sort of recommends stuff based on what you've just listened to. It's very easy to share stuff, hence the fact I keep trying to share stuff with you. And... Well, I, it's I, it's funny you send me these uh, these Spotify links and I just I I just look it up on YouTube because I have YouTube Premium yeah. right now, yeah. and so I could just look it up on there. It's it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, yeah, same sort of difference, I guess. But uh, the other nice thing as well is is actually you can say you pick a pick a band, um, the the band themselves will pick and publish their like radio station or track lists so you can discover an artist that you like then they may or may not or they may have um, a list of their own music that they're listening to so I discovered some stuff and then I noticed this on the side and then I clicked on it and it's just like yeah this is the stuff I'm chilling to right now mm. from the artist who you've just been listening to so that's kind of cool all those kind of things are kind of cool but it is a bit like you're able you to find really... new music that way. I, I like that about Pandora oh, as well. You just put a name of a band and it just really finds you all this... Cool. New music, yeah. I have discovered a hell of a lot since lockdown. <laughs> right, that is that has actually really helped my musical listening. I'm really loving that side to it. So much so I did spend a rather extortionate amount of money on headphones just for the purposes of listening to music solely uh, while I was working. <laughs> I'm trying to find like a list of best albums of the 2000s. Oh, Rolling Stone has a list. That's probably the one to go with, right? Yeah, I would say so. Um, is that number one? Oh, this is number 100. Okay, I'm I'm gonna go I'm gonna go top one. I'm gonna start with one. I'm gonna do it backwards, because who cares about 100, right? <laughs> I don't know. I sort of find that you know you're gonna know everything that's in that top ten. You're gonna have listened to it, I reckon. You think? Do you know what I mean? I probably probably. Um, wow, this is a is very a good thorough. way to discover stuff. It is a good way to discover stuff that you've maybe overlooked or missed. Or yeah, because I, when you said that the Strokes is probably your your favorite album or the best album for you from the two thousands, it made me think, man, we really didn't, we probably didn't really branch out too much. That was probably when we started just kind of going, well, this is what I like. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, 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 yeah. You sort of lock it in. You lock it in and go, this is what I like. But then I did discover, start discovering electronic. I, I, I suppose things wow. like mass the, the yeah. Strokes, is this it, was number two yeah, on the see. Rolling Stones. Of the 2000s, though. Not of all time. Oh, uh, just the 2000s. Well, what's number one, then? Wow. Kid A. Did that come out after 2000? Oh, yeah, it did. Shit. Yeah, it did. Yeah, I had a car already. I know that. You was 90... I want to say 98. Mm, yeah. October of 2000. Yeah, okay. That's fair enough. I, I, can't, I can't argue with that. Oh, big time. I'm really glad that that is number one in the list. That should be number one in the list. It's fucking phenomenal. Basically. And then number two is The Strokes, Is This It? That is a really great album. If you just listen to it in isolation and just try and be subjective and just listen to it, it's a really cracking album, man, to be honest. Wilco, which I've heard I've heard of this band. I, I can honestly say that I've never listened to them. But uh, Wilco yeah. I've heard is of Wilco. Yeah. Yankee Hotel Foxtrot, um, which I'm now going to listen to that album because if it's up there with those two albums... Uh, I, well, this is the beauty of looking at those listening. You think, well, even if I don't like it, it's still got to be fairly decent to be honest. Because it's got to be, it's got to be taste. It is subjective. That, that absolutely. Whoever's written that number one list, they might have a whole system for how they've decided it. But either way, I know people that hate Radiohead that or like refuse to listen to them. Yeah, yeah, me too. Lo- me and too. more than one, oh, not just oh, one. Oh, this isn't like one person. This is like m- person. I'm like, no, but it isn't. You, you're totally interpreting it in the wrong way. You're listening to it wrong. I would say. <laughs> I remember <laughs> being like, you know, I was, I was, I knew who Radiohead was, right? But I wasn't really into them per se. Um, I never owned an album before OK Computer. Really? Yeah, and I was I was at a I was at a, a record store, like a proper record store, and they had a Japanese import of OK Computer. Yeah, I remember that back then. They used to love the old Japanese imports, oh, right? Of oh. albums. It had that I like that. the packaging with the Japanese, and and so <laughs> yeah. I bought it because I loved the packaging. And I knew Radiohead was good, and and I knew the album was good. I knew it was good. You know what I mean? It had already been lauded as as like a masterpiece and stuff. So it wasn't like I discovered it and went, "Oh, I'm 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 the first guy in the train." No, like I was, I was a little late to the party. The album was already considered great, um, but it was still when it came out. It was still before Kid A and all that. And uh, and so I bought it, and I went home and I listened to it. And Ah, dude, like just even thinking about it now, I get kind of emotional thinking about it. How how impactful yeah. how impactful that album was, and even now, yeah. when you when I play it now and I hear the first guitar riff, and I could hear it in my yeah. head right now. I just love the fir- the intro song and the sound of those keys. Yes, and the drums. Oh, the drums and just I all of it. Think actually, thinking about it now, it makes sense that that album singly changed the path of what I was interested in listening to because up to that point it was 100% indie Britpop mm. uh, and if it weren't indie that was the roots of where indie came from which was good old fashioned rock and roll anyway right. right right back through the ages and then that album I was just like whoa okay and then so I guess where all the electronic kind of where I dig all the electronica kind of stuff. Kind of come, this kind of probably started from that album. Between that album and Massive Mezzanine. Attack, right? Yeah. Mezzanine. Well, they were they were influenced by them. Am I am I correct on that? Right. Probably there was a bit of a core group. I think at the time, you know, Radiohead were like the number two album, the number two band, right? You had Oasis, then you had there was there was Oasis and Blur and that whole thing, but really it was pretty much the Benz or what's the story more than glory or, or definitely maybe you know they were like the three biggest right albums, i reckon musically what about park life man yeah but that 
I, that is a great album, and I, I listened to that first, right? I got into that first before I got into Oasis and everything else. But, like I said about the gimmicky cheesiness of Weezer, Buddy Hoddy, Park Life sort of has that about it. Yeah. Do you know what I, I mean? I, yeah, it's I do. It's a bit twee, it's a bit tongue-in-cheek... It's not, no really it's not serious. It's not serious music. Exactly. Yeah, there's no serious music on that. There's no super deep tunes on the album. It's the, it's very far away from radio. It's, <laughs> it's very it's far still away. Greater, but it's, oh it's, yeah. yeah it, it almost is complete. It's the same genre of music, but it's probably the two polar opposites. Yeah, the antithesis. A genre of music. Yeah, absolutely. So I still love it, mate. It's still a great album, and I still love a really couple of good tunes on that album. Um, and not the main ones, not like, I mean, Park Life is great, but, I mean, and some of the other main ones off that album, but I, I always tend to prefer... Boys and Girls. <laughs> so. Yeah, nah, see, I'm not a massive fan. It's all right if it comes on, but I, I sort of almost automatically, deliberately... You avoid it, because uh, you heard it so much, I'm guessing. Like the mainstream songs that are singles. So fact, Park Life, like Park Life was not a commercial album in the United States. If you were listening to Park Life, you knew somebody who knew yeah. somebody who knew somebody who was a mod uh, or fancied themselves. Was, uh, you know what I mean? Like uh, a, uh, yeah, a bit hipster. Yeah, a hipster. A hipster. Right? Yeah, yeah, a two thousands nineties hipster would yeah, listen no, to no. like Blur or Pulp or you yeah. know like this stuff that yeah. it wasn't that those were yeah. not commercial albums. MTV did not play those music. Uh, song number two was the first song that uh, blew up here for song blur two. Song yeah two. yeah that that album was 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 amazing self-titled yeah that album, yeah that came out because like park life wasn't even their first album that was like number three no it was what Mo modern life is rubbish was before that um yeah what was yeah, before leisure. there was a leisure yeah yeah so yeah yeah and absolutely had, but for, but here for the for like life. the american market like the the, the teenagers and the sort of the, yeah, the yeah. funneling of the music it was uh it was the self-titled yeah that album was a bit more grungy wasn't it that was that one made way more sense in the states that album yes yeah, yeah. way more Heart yeah Life was far too british yes if, if you know what I mean. it yes i do british know what you mean album. yes absolutely yeah. it was brit pop it was it a brit pop yeah british and pulp was sort of similar i think pulp is oh, i love were, pulp as good if not you know possibly better looking back at them but uh, yeah in retrospect i think they were better in retrospect man yeah, yeah. like their their highs are higher i feel like yeah yeah I, I agree but they didn't have quite as good a comeback album as as the self-titled blur album because that is no they didn't have that album. they didn't have that album at all they never had the no, breakout no, they, they they sort of stayed indie out. they stayed indie they never had the breakout commercial successful album no, no. So yeah, I love you know I love all that stuff, mate. I, I, you know I can go show you. It's all in my CD collection, original CDs from the time. But yeah, I have a band. I have a copy of his and hers from the from like 1994. Oh, wicked! Yeah. Yeah, that, but that was thanks to my friends. That they were their older brother was like sort of, uh, of a, a hit. So you had the older brother and sister who who were cool and knew that music so that's yep. the game to it right yeah that was the only that was the only way you know they according to my friends it was because of them but really it was their older brother that got that got them into it and then yeah, yeah, yeah. you know i'm an impressionable young man and they're into something yeah, that's cool yeah, and absolutely. different and yeah, so absolutely. but uh going back to radiohead um okay computer blew my mind like i it literally it, I didn't really like that album to begin with. What? When I first listened to oh, it. Oh, but you know what? You see, here's it. You were in the, the Benz. Yes. I was coming yes. off the Benz, right? The Benz was out, and the Benz was toe to toe. It was perfect. As Perfection. Good of album yeah. as any album at the time. Right? I went backwards. I listened yeah, to the Benz really after. Kind of classics. See, that's madness to me. Yeah, you, that's like you you listen to him the wrong way around, really. But. By the time I got to the end of the Benz, though, I was like in tears. That fucking oh my god, dude, that album. It's it's an yeah, incredible it's album. It's it's, it's incredible. incredible, and that that last song is, I might. Street spirit is it? Is street spirit, spirit fade out. Yeah. Street spirit fade out. Yeah, that might it, it might it might be uh, my my favorite. Ah, no, it's it's there's too many. 
the, the other day talk show host came out came on the on on pandora talk show host came on and i was like i had forgotten because it's not on any albums i had fucking forgot about that song it came on the fucking radio and i was like i lost my I shit album. what album is that on is it on is it on um is it on the live album then no well where does it come from then is it a b-side then it was a fucking it was on a soundtrack man oh really yeah, let me double check this i want to i don't want to be wrong and if i'm wrong i'll I'm own sure it right, mate. I, I can't i think i know the song you're on about but i'm not quite sure 100 percent. really you, okay yeah i so i sort of know it but the fact that I, you, you can oh fuck it's on the song. no it's not on the bends how could it be on the bends is it really on the bends Oh, that can't be right. It was in it was Romeo and Juliet soundtrack, but is it on the Benz? Sounds about the right time for it. Yeah, it, it it's definitely the right time, but is it on it? No, it's not. It's not. It's not on the Benz. It's just a song that they did for a soundtrack, then, is it? That's it. Uh, let me double check. It, it's definitely on the Romeo and Juliet soundtrack. And um, that show, that song's amazing. You you don't remember that song at all? Um, no, I'm sure I do. Of let me try to play this without I mean, fucking it, blowing it, out it, your ears. It, let me see if I if it'll let me. I just look it up on. Uh... Let me let, let me see. I'll play it far away from the. Oh, this is a live one. Shoot. Oh, you're playing it. <laughs> you got it. Yeah, it's a bass side on um, Street Spirit. Yeah. Okay, so it was it was recorded with the Benz, but it was a B side. God, that's yeah, a B-side. Sure, Have you heard the B-sides to OK Computer? That is like a killer yeah, album. Because I've got, um, Jesus. I've effectively got three versions of OK Computer. So I've got the original studio album. Then I bought an EP, uh, which is How Am I Driving? That tune. And it's got about six tracks on it. Which I think some of these sides, some might be just stuff that didn't make OK Computer. And then I've got OK, Not OK, which was a re-release of OK Computer a few years ago. You remember I told you about it? Mm -hmm. And it had a whole bunch of extra stuff on it, like a second disc. That album, the B-sides could yeah. be... Uh, if the B-sides were released as an album, it would be like a... Oh yeah, album. exactly. I mean, yeah. Absolutely. I remember I made a B sides album. I I got all the B sides and I made a. I burned it. You know. Yeah, I did the same. I I did the same. I mean, so good. Arguably, uh, Oasis's best album is a B side album called The Master Plan. Same with the Smiths. Arguably, louder than Bones. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um. It, but <laughs> my anyway. Well, that was oh, the thing back then in the nineties, man. It was like bands were sort of measured on how good their b-sides on their singles were yeah and their live performances yeah, that's true. that's how well, you the knew ultimate, the ultimate bands were like you bought a single and you knew you were getting free mega tunes yep yeah right yeah whereas now god knows what comes on a single now no you just you buy the mp3 on itunes or whatever <laughs> Exactly. I wonder if you can still buy cd singles i don't know i mean you can still buy the albums because i still buy a lot of cd albums but um, but, but what, I guess the point I was trying to make was going back to the 2000s and Kid A and how this all, mm -hmm. this whole rant mm -hmm. sort of began. Um, yep. when I bought Kid A, I drove home and I didn't even play it in the car. I'm like, I'm going to go into my house and play this mm -hmm. album and I'm, it's going to be like a, a earth shattering, like you know, a religious experience. I'm going to have a religious, because that's what I had with OK Computer. You know, it was fucking mm. mind blowing. Yeah, of course, yeah. And, yeah. and so I played Kid A 
and I, I, the album started and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. And I remember, I remember like about halfway through the album, I just thought, my God, they laid an egg. Like, holy <laughs> shit. They just yeah, shit the fucking bed. Like what a disappointment coming off of okay computer like what a complete and utter disappointment i was so disappointed um i i, I could see the artistry in it and i could see I, I wasn't one of those people that just dismissed it i knew it was yeah. artistic i knew they went deeper i was glad they didn't go the other way which is to go kind of softer more commercial uh, they went, but I felt like, oh, they got too artsy. They went too hard that way. You know, it yeah, was. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They like, oh, they, 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 they were, it, you know, they kind of like Nirvana when they did In Utero, where they're like, they went opposite of the, of the commercial album. They went too hard the other way. You know what I mean? But Almost I think. Just to spite. Yeah. Just to spite the industry or whatever. Yeah. And I, I sort of felt like that's what Kid A was them flipping off going, nah, we're going to fucking do whatever. We're going to just make yeah. noise. We're just going to, yeah. we're going to, our songs aren't going to have structure. We're not going to have a middle eight. We're not going to have a fucking verse or a chorus. We're not going to yeah. have a, we're not going to have a yeah. fucking single. And, and, and in a way, I think maybe it was that it, maybe it was the middle finger, Possibly. but, but I remember Possibly. thinking, Oh, what a what a shame, you know, that they didn't make a proper album, that they did this sort of statement. I think it's so great in the end that they only made they made one album of each. Yeah. Right, they made the Benz. Pablo Honey's sort of similar to the Benz. Pablo Honey's fantastic. Old, so underrated. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, I remember getting is. that at the swap meet for two dollars on CD, and there was like hundreds of them right there because of all yeah. the fucking people that bought the CD for creep and then just ended up trading it in or selling it because they didn't appreciate the rest of the album, which is fucking amazing. I mean Yeah, it really is. Anyone actually, can play yeah, guitar, just... like oh like there's so many Yeah. Like Lurgy, like ah. Uh. But anyways, yeah. I mean, the Benz is the album that made them. That allowed them to then make the albums that actually turned out to be even better. Um, and every album is an evolution and a change, you know. And that's the ultimate thing a band can do, right? If you rip out two albums that sound exactly the same, then eventually, I mean, that might satisfy um, selling records at the time, but over time. They just get forgotten about. They merge into one. You know, do you know what I mean? I do. It's sort of the whole, like, I some uh, some people are not going to like it, but I feel the same way about, like, the Beatles with certain albums where, like... Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. It's I like, this is part one, this proper, is part two. <laughs> you yeah, know what I mean? Exactly. Uh, I've and, barely listened to an actual Beatles album in my lifetime. I know pretty much all their songs. You've never, listened, oh, to all you've never listened to like a proper. But, they're they're good, but, but, but if you listen, sort of have, they come in. Like they come the in twos. Albums. They come in twos. Yeah, yeah. I've got the blue album. That doesn't count. That's album. a comp. I know. I know it doesn't count. Um, but I've got it anyway. Uh, <laughs> no, it's a good album. That was what. I, that was my exposure. When, when, when you can't, when you can't afford CDs and you have to save up for them. Uh, or sell existing CDs to buy them, or wait for a birthday or Christmas. Yeah, dude. You want to maximize. <laughs> I grew so up with that album in my house. My that album was yeah. sitting dusty in, in in our record player, like our little, you know, the the cabinet. Remember, they used to come in like yeah. a tower cabinet, yeah. and the bottom, all the records were at the bottom, and then you had your amp and and your tape deck, and then at the very top was like the record player and it had like a little glass door and they had the two giant speakers next to it in mine growing up was that album the blue album and the red album and um oh, right. yeah. that yeah. those albums were in there uh and um like led zeppelin uh physical graffiti like just stuff that my older oh. brother bought that i'm i'm grateful yeah. that i got to listen to as a kid because right. i could have done a lot worse i could have done a lot worse than listening to the beatles yes. as a kid and and i'm not yeah. knocking them i'm just saying a lot of their albums come in pairs um yeah they do and that's fine they're still great they're still great and everything revolver rubber soul good. are kind of like a one and two good, if you know what i mean yeah yeah i do well it's it's that whole thing and i was gonna say this earlier when napster came out um the beatles metallica led zeppelin i listened i mean once i could get a hold of all of their music i did and i listened to those 
like Led Zeppelin, Metallica albums to the point where like I can't even listen to those albums anymore. Yeah, I and the same with the Beatles to like certain me. certain albums. Like I, I just I listened to certain Beatles albums so much that like I can't even listen to them anymore. Um, yeah, I, I I know exactly <clears throat> what you mean. I, I sort of did that. I think the one I did that with was Zeppelin, actually. Zeppelin, yes, dude. I oh thought, my god, I, one, two, and three. The first album I bought was um, again for the same logic as I said before. The oh, first you bought a CD comp. of theirs I actually bought was the song remains the same live which is mm. a double CD, right? has all their and hits I remember being in the shop and i looked i was looking on the back yes yeah, like yeah it's got it's got all the songs check it's like oh 15 minute version of stairway to heaven check um <laughs> and it's live and I'm, I'm getting my oh. value for money and it's live yeah yeah, yeah it's, dude it's... live albums i fucking love mm. live albums even if favorite, i'm sick of a band i'll listen to a fucking live album because it's a different thing Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love No Quarter though. No Quarter on the song remains the same live at Madison Square Garden. Good. It is just mind blowingly good. I want to learn the keys to that one day. You gotta have you gotta have goals, right? So I'm, you do. My, my two goals are to learn the keys to to be able to play No Quarter, um, and the ultimate goal is. Riders on the Storm. Ooh. The minute you said that, it started playing in my head. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, right? The intro yeah. to that. Yeah. Yeah. And if I, if I, once I get to that point and I can play that, then I'm done. I don't need to learn anything else. <laughs> Manzarek was a maniac. If you're going to... I know. Yeah. <laughs> organist, just I amazing. Know. Amazing Basically organist. Basically like the, the best, pretty much the best organist around ever i think for a rock and roll band yeah i Pretty i, I can't argue with that so <laughs> i can't think of another one that comes to mind um but uh i promise you i'm done with this radiohead thing at the minute i get this out uh <laughs> so well, kid a disappointed dis, 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 disappointed the shit out of me okay yeah. And I listened to it maybe two or three yeah, more times, and I sort of yeah. threw it to the side and thought, "Oh well, what a what a waste." And one day it was like, I don't know, it was a cold night. I got a blanket, and I didn't feel like watching TV. I, I turned on the TV, nothing was working, and I saw Kid A just sitting there on the floor because I was a pi- I was a pig, you know, Late, late teens, early adulthood, you shits on the floor, right? You don't. I'm surprised that was even. In, I'm surprised the CD was even in the Kid A case and not in different case. You have to play. You know, find the CD game. Yeah, the, yeah. There you go. It's a right, game. So the, the CD I thought was in this case is not in this case. What album is it? Oh, okay. I guess I'll listen to that. Led Zeppelin. So I'll, let's look in the Led Zeppelin case. Oh, it's not in there. I've got a different CD. So which? Yeah, and you just go on this little treasure hunt to find. Yeah, it's a it's a, it's a game in and of itself. Um, but yeah, it was in there because I I was so disappointed with it. If I'd have been, if I'd have loved it, it probably would have been in the case. You know what I mean? But it was, and I decided to throw it on. And for whatever reason, that night, laying on the couch, you know, with my blanket, it just fucking clicked. And I went. Yeah, I can't remember. Oh fuck! This is actually amazing. <laughs> Yeah, I had exactly the same. Uh, I had exactly the same process. That's exactly the same thing that happened to me. Not quite in that um, exact same circumstances, but yeah, yeah, I remember listening to it. OK, computer took a little bit of a listen. It wasn't instantly because I was just expecting the Ben's part two. That, exactly, Ben's exactly. Part two. Well, I had so the I same. Like, mm, we sort of had the same it. experience on different albums. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And then, so then I, I, but I quickly got into that. Uh, and then Kid A was, was exactly the same in that I was loving OK Computer and it was generally widely regarded by anybody, critics, professionals, and just general Joe public that to be one of the best albums ever made, OK Computer. And then Kid A came out and I was just like, hmm, oh, hmm, oh, it's a bit weird. I'm not sure I like this at all. <laughs> but... Yeah, I've, I I think when it really clicked for me, I think, actually, I remember now, was probably, 
Yeah, probably 2001-ish. Trying to remember now. Basically, I would have been studying, doing my degree, and I would have been sitting there listening. Just put you just put music on, and that just helps you zone in, right, to do your work. Yeah, a bit like a bit like me today, you know, or on the other day actually, when I got to crack on and do work that I don't, I'd rather not be doing, but I know I've got to get through. Then music just it eases the path. Yeah, it eases through. the pain. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure that for some reason in my head I, I've got a feeling that that is when I really just started to rack that album on and I was listening to it without listening to it, if you know what I mean. Mm, and it started clicking. And then somewhere along the lines I think it just sort of clicked, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I love it, mate. I listen to it now. I, I To prove the point, I spent 400 quid on a pair of headphones last week, right? I told you about those headphones. <laughs> yeah. And the first album I listened to, I had a bit of a dilemma. I'm like, what am I going to act? What's the first album I'm going to listen to? And I went into my studio. And a lot I of pressure. CDs and CD yeah, and I just randomly grabbed a few. And Kid A was one of the very small handful of CDs I grabbed. What and else? I was talking to my mates in uh, in my WhatsApp chat. What else have I got? I got I picked up my Ulrich Schnauss uh, uh, albums because I love that geezer and proper good listening kind of music produced. Do you know what I mean electronic? Mm. Uh, I think I picked up Kid A, The Benz, and oh, what was the other one? I took a photo of it. I think I picked up uh, Rolling Stones' Forty Licks. Nice. And before I before I listened to any of it, I had to have dinner, and I was just pinging my mates, you know, our general WhatsApp chat. I told them I got the headphones, and they're like, "Oh, what's your first song going to be?" And I'm like, oh, "I don't know, hmm. actually. I, I picked these up, but I'm not really sure about it." And then my mate was, two of my mates were like, "Surely it's got to be Dark Side of the Moon." <laughs> so that was the first time I listened to. That's and a that very good mind. choice. That blew my mind. Listen to. Through that headphones, I must have listened to that album thousands of times, and there was stuff that I heard that was never there before, um, which I know sounds like a cliche, but it's so true. No, and it is. The second it album is. up, the second album up of all the albums I could have listened to was Kid A. That was it. Wow, very similar albums in some respects. They are. They uh, very much are. I they remember definitely. people calling Kid A like our generation's Dark Side of the Moon. Yeah, and they were saying the same about OK Computer in the 90s when that came out. I think I think OK Computer was more like Dark Side of the Moon. It was more directly like Dark Side of the Moon, but they just went and did the same thing again, but electrified it. Right. Right. Um, Amnesiac yeah. was even more like it, I think, than Kid A was, but yeah. I think Amnesiac is great, but it's probably... Even though the the bar is still high, whatever you're talking about, it's probably the least good of all of them, really. You, you think so? I I felt like it was probably. an organic. Well, I, I, it was a less cold, is. more organic version of of Kid A. I know yeah, they were going to call it Kid yeah, B. Possibly. And oh, really? Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. It was supposed sense. to be Kid okay, B. So uh, but they didn't want to kind of do the whole double album thing. You know what I mean? Where they're like. T- where the, it's like yeah that's a bit too uh it's not very radiohead is it to do yeah yeah it's not very radiohead to do that that kid a kid b type of thing but that's but I what would the, say this, you know there were those albums like you said they were very similar to dark side of the moon is very similar type of album to uh kid a and okay computer because i think you cannot listen to an individual song off of any of those albums no you're right you you you're in it for the whole duration right you put on one of them songs you're putting the whole album on you listen to it in the right order from start to finish don't be fucking it up by putting track six on because it will not work nope they're proper albums man that's what a proper album should be that's why it's an album it's a set piece of it's the a, whole thing yeah it's a con- it's like a film <laughs> you're watching yes. you, the whole like the whole thing it's it's an artist artistic expression yeah um, beginning the middle the end you know and usually it's like the first the third or the last track are the best tracks on any of those albums yeah yeah I, I would agree with that 
I would agree with that. Um, I'm, I I think the first track is my favorite song off Amnesiac. Uh, yeah, it definitely yeah. is off Kid A. Yeah, the anthem. Uh, Got to go with the anthem. Um, anthem is yeah, phenomenal. Um, I love on the bends. I love. Um, no, it's definitely everything. No, it's definitely uh, everything in its right place. Yeah, even Planet now X, I could it hear the it. First tune on the bends. Uh, Planet Telex. I think it is. Planet, that's the one, yeah. yeah. Probably best tune on that. Uh, okay, OK Computer had what? Uh, was it Airbag? Yes. Yeah. Possibly not the best one on that album. No, but it was, a, it was a really good song, though. But it's still a great, great intro song, yeah, for yeah. sure. Um, I like Paranoid Android, I think. Electroneering, yeah. Electroneering, Climbing Up the Walls, No Surprises. Uh fuck <laughs> you can't really pick one out from that album no you, you can't basically the whole album off. no you can't no you know you yeah uh, i love them mate it's quite it's you know i'm kind of gutted i've never seen them live but what? at the same time oh, raise thing. don't tell me that i, I saw them, them live them. man me and my missus went to go see them our, it was our first year yeah, together I like and we went to go see fucking Radiohead, and it was during uh, it was two thousand three. We, we we had just started dating, and we went to go see them during the Hell to the Thief tour. All right, yeah, okay. Which I I I I know it's an it's kind of like not a an album that everyone loves. I fucking love that album because again, time and place. I love them all, mate. I really when I do listen love to Hell to the Thief, I'm just like. Dude, I'm I'm back in like you said, Time Machine. I'm in 2003, and um, you know I'm listening to uh, to uh, you know you've not been paying attention that first track, and I'm like mm-hmm. listening to it going, are they about to break into like a jam right now? Are they gonna fucking play like a jam? Oh my god, they're gonna fucking do it, and then oh my god, they did it, because you know it'd been two albums of like no jamming out, you know what I mean, no rock. And then all of a sudden on that. Yes, yeah, I know what you mean by that. Yeah, that was just like, oh, yeah, they, they've gone back to that thing that we sort of wanted the last three albums to consist of. That was that was oh, the OK Computer like sequel, did. that album. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and in later albums, certainly like In Rainbows and stuff like that, they have hinted going back right to their original roots. Yeah. Like there is yeah. almost acoustic stuff on there. In Rainbows reminds me of of uh, Amnesiac for some reason to me. It's like Amnesiac part I two. I love In Rainbows, mate. I love me too. Uh, Reckoner. That fucking tune is insanely good. No one gets it when I'm like, oh, you need to listen to this tune. It's amazing. <laughs> dude. They just sort of stare at you a bit blankly. Like no, a dog. dude. In yeah. Rainbows, I have it on vinyl. And honestly, man, when I play that thing on vinyl... If I have to like lay down and close my eyes because it sounds like they're playing in the fucking room. Yeah, it, it's it's incredible, dude. That's an yeah. incredible album. One of those albums that I think it, most people, I don't know. You have to be of a certain. I, I don't want to sound like a fucking pris, but you have to be a certain type of person to appreciate that album. Yeah, you do, mate. Yeah, that's why that's how music works, though, isn't it? Right, that is. That is fundamentally how music sort of works in a lot of ways. You know, anyone can listen to any music, and 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 everyone could like the same music, but everyone does not But also, more importantly, if there was like the definitive best song of all time, which obviously doesn't exist because it's impossible to rate that. <laughs> yeah. If there was, let's just say, let's just say the 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 world has spoken and it is this song, right. We'd all we'd all sort of hear it slightly differently anyway. I think you and me would hear it exactly the same way, right? Just judging by how we talk about stuff and the music that you're into and I'm into and everything else. <laughs> Except for a few, that, there, there we have exceptions. We do have exceptions. Yeah, well, there's always there is always a few exceptions, but I do think that the way that we would translate that music in our minds via our ears would largely if you could then record what it sounds like in your brain yes yeah i could record what it sounds like in my brain i reckon they'd be pretty close yeah but then on another day a thousand other people would it would sound completely different to you yeah and 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 no way and no way is better than the other you know when i'm listening to a track i'm listening to the bass i'm listening to the drums i'm listening to the production i'm listening to like what? What the engineering and what were they doing and what were they trying to do and what were, yeah, you know what I'm I'm yeah, hearing yeah. all of that and it's all beautiful ballet in my head of that, 
and yeah, and someone absolutely. might just listen to it and just start dancing and that's the way they interpret it and and their yeah. way is my way is not better than their way it's just different no no there's no better or worse that's why music's so good and uh, you know still works and everything you know but yeah I just love it it's great it's kind of and when you play it that's even more crazy sort of magic going on there man yeah that's a whole other thing I, that's I think that's like a whole level of, of telepathy right going yeah. on there yeah, yeah. When you're jamming out and something yeah, happens, out. and you're yeah, just like, "Wow!" Like that happened in that moment. Um, yeah, no one. That no, was not written down. No one just played that from a piece of music that they learned. It just all happened. It's all feeling. But it's all feeling. Thing, most of the stuff I send you, that's how we come up with it. There's a few songs now that we've got some lyrics to, and we sort of know them, if you like. Uh, but a lot of the stuff that isn't a cover is just random jamming where we've just come up with something and then rolled with it without anyone saying a word to anyone and it's just this like telepathic magic stuff going on it's just unbelievable really it is Honestly, it's, just unbelievable. it's energy it's is what it is mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's 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 the energy and i i don't think Unless you've, you've per, like performed or jammed or, you know what I mean? If you've ever done that consistently with like a group of people, anyone that's ever done that will completely understand exactly what you mean. You don't, you know yeah, what I mean? Everyone else will have a clue what you're talking about. <laughs> exactly. They'll just be like, yeah. oh yeah, I'm sure, you I'm know, but it's like, no, 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 no. Me too. Just missing out on a whole Me too. Because, you know, it didn't used to be that way. There was a time when, when everybody performed together and you know what I mean? Like you would sing at school, or you would sing in in yeah, a in a, around a fire, you know what I mean? And everybody would get involved, and and it's not really mm -hmm. like that anymore. No, you're 